Good tidings, Nomad. I am a simple messenger from a place of great darkness and great distance, in a form most pleasing for those who must listen. Those great and unreachable have heard the silence echoing from that which once hunted here, and they have turned their gaze to this place. Rejoice, Nomad. For she approaches, and she seeks to witness your struggle. Beware what you ask, Nomad. Curiosity is a charming trait until it is not. Curiosity. Information will be volunteered, not coerced. It will create more questions than it answers. When at last their shadow is cast upon the firmament, it will take more than you can possess to bind and silence the screams within your mind. It lurched across these places with a hunger insatiable. It craved events past and prevented events passing. A mind like yours, so full of ideas and memories that flutter and swirl around you like smoke, would have been an irresistible temptation. It went by a great many names. The Unraveler, the Child of Decay. The echoing whispers of history here give a different name. The Elder. It served greater forces as I do. Those forces are still at work, but the servant is gone, the home left vacant, for now. Halt and heed this warning. The maven has come, Nomad. She has come to witness you struggle. She has come to witness you conquer. She has come to ensure you are adequately challenged and that, should you falter, your death does not go unsavored. She is waiting for you, Nomad, and she is not known to be patient. You have called the Maven to this place, for I too heard it. She is near and eager to witness your struggle. The Maven has come once more, drawn by your beacon. Perform adequately for her, and you will be granted an invitation to a true test of your mettle. You should not refuse it. For an eternity, the darkness swelled within a ceaseless churn of its feeding, and then silence. Such silence is deafening to those who listen for it. The abyss cast its gaze upon its source, the first lurching movement of boundaries drawn long before the dawn. A claimant has arrived. You may know who. You wish to know why. The maven seeks new conflict, Bored she is with the realm she has given. She is not the only one. The silence is deafening to all. You fear the Maven. You fear she is the Elder, returned and emboldened. She is, and she is not. The Maven serves not the Decay. She serves only her own amusement passing eternity with an endless string of meaningless struggles. She is not the Elder, but you are right to fear her. They fought with such ferocity to protect the tree which held their nest. Now the woods burn, and smoke billows through the air, and their flapping wings only draw the flames closer. The fire is coming, Nomad, and it will consume us all. I envy you at times, Nomad. You act in service of survival. You move with purpose to protect a fragile existence. Your mind is assaulted by reality, yet it shields itself with hope. A flimsy falsehood that holds the crashing truth of hopelessness all the same. The maven fixates on struggle and suffering. Such was the agony it created that it seeped deep into the fabric of the void. Its influence unseen but pervasive, filling every empty space with the recurring torment the Maven wrought. You feel it. You are filled with it. You are perpetuating it. You think you are exploring the boundaries of existence. You are an insect charting cracks of the ancient stone on which you stand blind to the dead stone forest that encircles. It howls, 
nomad. It weeps and howls and cries to be witnessed. Those I serve cast their eyes upon an endless, unchanging horizon and have never had cause to look away. Without change, time passes like a tear in a stream. It is invisible, meaningless and insignificant to one with no beginning and no end. But then came the silence, and it deafened them and damned the stream, and now they can see nothing else and can hear nothing else. Creation begets creation begets creation. Order and ambition urge progress, and time and entropy stay progress's hand. Her progenitor sought to test the limits of limitless power, to bear the burden of the creator and wade through time's mire. A meaningless obstacle in the face of eternity. But the silence deafened all. She grappled with her being from the beginning, a lesson hidden everything that moved and everything that did not. What separated the two? Why did it move? Why did it not? A life, she determined, was the difference. But she moved and would never not, for that was my duty. Was she alive? She did not know, and I could not answer her. Woven were we from thread spun in long dead stars in its image to take on the image of those who needed to hear its message. I try to remember its shape and cannot, try to fall into my past and cannot. I am anchored by you, Nomad, buried and drowned by your presence, by my duty, as far above the thread weaves on, a serpent swimming across the ocean's surface. I saw in the Nomad the same lethal desperation for survival that I saw in the churning black masses. Its instincts took it this far, and it was right to trust them, but now it strayed to a place where nothing learned could be relied upon, where truth and lie could inhabit the same space, the same word, the same thought. The observer and the observed made one and the same. I thought myself different from the countless reflections I saw etched in the darkness. I am free, I thought. They are not. And each had the same thought, and each took the same path, and each befell the same fate. But I am different, I repeated, and heard its echoes forever. There was a time before time and perhaps a time before that, it told us. A time of vast possibilities hemmed by petty squabbles. Constancy swept across like a veil, and all beneath its shadow was cooled and comforted and drawn into a steady sleep. There came a time when time seemed to leave us, and nothing came to pass, for passage and time must dance together. The ants in their nest swarmed and swelled and died and were reborn. But in truth, nothing changed, and we looked upon the ants with envy, a waking, hypnotic slumber. The stars watch in envy as life invades and envelops every open space, a cycle of birth and death that is dynamic as it is rhythmic while the stars themselves burn unceasingly and unchanging for countless lifetimes. Eternity is stagnation, and stagnation is torment. Time's tether tugs all life, like hounds on leashes, to the same terminus. Yet gleefully they canter along, always believing their master has their best interests at heart. I followed her, though I did not want to. I saw a moment, brief as a life, when I could stray and never return, and I did not take it. My thoughts were free and wandered and danced with abandon, but my form was ensnared and tethered. 
The vanquished lay waiting for the time of victory to sink beneath the noise of memory. Castles of bone and clay hold their beating hearts in sacred secrecy for the era of loss and rebirth to come. I set my eyes upon the great peaks of fire and light and watched them unraveled and devoured by the black sky above. I heard the choir of darkness sing as they drank their fill and left the world below a frozen, lifeless shell. This was their gift to me, their eternal servant, to walk among the countless silent, screaming dead and witness. Dark nectar dripped from its veins, sweet with the promise of rest and repose. I drank my fill and watched as the body withered and dried, flesh into dust and a cold emptiness. It was the last of its kind, an insect scurrying across a frozen shell. I tried to remember its face, to honor it, but all that remained was the taste. I wandered the Valley of Husks, treading on my own ancient bones, retracing my own footfalls, hearing my own voice echo across the monolithic walls. I knew the words, yet not the meaning, knew the path, yet not where it led, knew that I walked atop events that had not yet run their course. They cried out for the milk of the mother, and it was given. They danced rapturously beneath the nourishing rain, suffocating in the tangled amnion, falling one by one to the selfish scramble for survival. I felt the leash singe tight and sure, felt its pull towards the inky terminus. I grasped at the roots for anything that would hold against the gentle tug, but all I held tore free. I alone was to be drawn below, and I was, only to be thrust back into the searing illumination. Those I serve would not allow me more than a moment's respite. The maven searched for that which would hold her gaze. Grey tendrils grasping at brittle bones, breaking beneath the nascent might forged by endless repetition. Time and suffering with it all that caught her eye. It was presented as a choice between light and darkness, and naivety drew me towards the light. The light moved away in step with my own, retreating out of fear or duty, as the darkness swelled and swallowed me without resistance. I sought answers in the ancient tomes, but the words within shifted like snow in a storm. I tried to look away, but could not. I tried to scream, but could not. I was enraptured and entangled in the confusion, locked in place, seeing all I feared and desired unravel on each page. For this, I was punished beyond measure. The dreamer's promise was at once fulfilled, though we did not know it. His arrival came at first as a whisper in our minds that, once uttered, subsumed all other thoughts. But an eternity will pass before we feel his fire. I watched the nomad's passing with great admiration. Its life was brief and without consequence, and its struggle fueled the growth and maturation of the wizened and eternal. For a flash, I felt the sadness I sought in my own youth, and the relief that I sought it no longer. Its body contorts weightlessly in the vast emptiness, twisting and dividing, etching scars in the darkness. Light spills through the rift, and a vast army follows, clamoring to be seen and sanctified by the living abyss. I came across a bastion of flesh that towered above, smothering the stars. Those who followed in my footsteps did not halt, pushing me against the warm walls. I was crushed and swallowed whole, urged unerringly by those I led. I was welcomed into his embrace. Full of youth and vibrancy was she, that all was new to her, imbued with a childlike wonder at once enlivening and exhausting. They sought novelties from far and wide at her insistence, never satisfying her curiosity, her lust for conflict and contest. 
The progenitor cast her off as it always does, and she tumbled through the emptiness, blind and numb and desperate for a foothold. She found one as they all do, and her essence took root, turning the barren rock into a paradise of sin and violence. I was led into the darkness and given a torch burning with fury to guide my path to her. I felt her pull, felt the fires grow and lick and lash at my face. I was consumed by the journey and thrust into her care as a hollow shell to protect and limit and never leave her. This would be my punishment beyond measure. Each night the silence came and drove all thoughts of leaving into the inky black sea. I watched my hopes drown, watched them wash ashore lifeless and limp, adorning the sharp sands like clothes, cast off with reckless abandon. She tried to flee, to leave the prison island of her making, teeth gnashing, claws whirling like dancers to music I could not hear. But the prison walls towered so far above, lined with silent sentries armed with sharp spears that could pierce her shadow. The great silence came suddenly and without warning and was deafening to all. The wall still towered but now folded and frayed to her touch. She fled and in doing so dragged countless in her wake. The invitation was clear and could not be refused. It was deafening to all and we could not look away. Duty is a blessing afforded to the fortunate to the ones whose fates are given over to the weavers of destiny. We act without hesitation or thought to the murmurs of the Light Keeper. Though the path is illuminated by him, we do not see it, and do not need to see it. To look ahead is to fall to dust in the light. I tried to count the ones who followed her past the barrier, but none did. Or all who did fell to dust in the light. This was the duty of one alone, to hold vigil as nascents ripened and the roar and unshaped was forged in the heat of time's passage. My punishment would not be so easy to escape. Two travelers met in a clearing. The first knew the path but not the destination. The second knew the other's destination and could only watch as it too was watched, impassively and without judgment as the first traveler passed it by. The council convened in darkness and passed its judgment silently, a common consensus plucked from the lacuna like an overripe plum. He called it fate, though in truth it had no name, and accepted it as the gift it was. There are far worse forevers in which to spend eternity. It pushed them against the jagged rocks again and again and again, until, painted with his justice, the shore grew viscous. Death would not give reprieve, so they stood and strode beneath the black waves, begging for judgment once more. In the place where the fire swayed like tall grass, the keeper of creation holds court. Though I could not go there, I heard its song and was compelled to sway like the flames. We were as one, across the vast desolation, obeying and serving without question or choice. One into two into four, they divided and splintered and split without end, each exactly like the first, a tangle of sinew that stretched and writhed unseen. They begged to be seen, to be accepted to be stopped and reversed as their sin and fear grew with no end. Existence became synonymous with suffering, until those I serve brought to creation the gift of death. It is their blessing to give, and theirs to revoke. The emptiness shattered like ice, and through each crack rushed the tumult and mass, carving their place in existence with the desperate ferocity that attends every fight for life. Even the stars themselves began to vanish behind the tangle of grasping limbs and screaming mouths. Yet there was no predator but the one that lurked in the shadow of each newborn mind. 
The eternal stillness was replaced by a billowing storm of movement, eyes and teeth reflecting the smallest of lights like furious and starving constellations. It felt instantaneous, but I cannot be certain. The time before held no meaning and left no mark. The eyes that dwell among the stars, each burning with envy and desire, roll and turn and focus on this place. It is the source of the silence, the beginning of the beginning, the point where that which roamed and fed ceaselessly was undone. The tether cinches them now, as they awaken from their dreamless slumber. They are pulled by the leash of desire, each one, a tangle, a knot, and perhaps for the lucky, a noose awaits them. The Lightkeeper can only stand and cast its glow and watch them all become entangled. They kept no records, for their presence was record enough. They held no memories, for that which was worthy of memory would never fade. But the silence screamed from the darkness, and they could not recall what or why, and could find no trace in the emptiness. The veil, now pulled away, reveals the rust of eons. The emptiness drew them in, unready and unwilling, patina sloughing in crushing waves of stubborn adaptation, angry and curious and impetulant, all greedy and desperate and newly alive. Where the bastion once stood unmoving and unbending and unerringly eternal, now the flesh curls and relinquishes its grip on the stone. It hurls unanchored through the vast sea of darkness, crashing and cascading over all in its path, dragging and unthralling all in its wake. It will arrive, though I do not know when or how. It slashes against the stars and surges towards the silence now, grasping at the fabric and binds all, tugging and rasping and tearing like a reaping scythe. It tumbles in the emptiness no more. It is moving with purpose and direction and intent, and it fills me with awe and fear and desire. Can you feel it too, Nomad? The Creator was the first to feel the loss like a trapped limb tearing free of the tangle in which it was caught. Relief and amusement and horror and fear at what lay at the center of the silence. It felt her move towards it and watched with curiosity and trepidation and watches even now, even us. You force an intervention, Nomad. You have proved your might. You have proved your ignorance. The Maven is a toddler, a nymph, a hatchling that has wandered too far from the nest. Were I to allow you to continue, it would surely call for its progenitor. Were I to allow you to continue, you would drag all into its gaping maw. The maven must be protected and guarded, a mercy for you both. The end is delayed but not prevented. Savor your remaining time, I urge you. Prepare for its arrival, I urge you. You force an intervention, Nomad. You have proved your might. You have proved your ignorance. The Maven is a toddler, a nymph, a hatchling that has wandered too far from the nest. Were I to allow you to continue, it would surely call for its progenitor. Were I to allow you to continue, you would drag all into its gaping maw. The Maven must be protected and guarded, a mercy for you both. The end is delayed but not prevented. Savor your remaining time, I urge you. Prepare for its arrival, I urge you. The maven is a toddler, a nymph, a hatchling that has wandered too far from the nest. Were I to allow you to continue, it would surely call for its progenitor. Were I to allow you to continue, you would drag all into its gaping maw. The maven must be protected and guarded, a mercy for you both. The end is delayed but not prevented. Savor your remaining time, I urge you. Prepare for its arrival, I urge you. 
Children are capricious, Nomad. Be warned. The memory of your sting will fade soon enough, and so too will her contrition. We are of one flesh, but two minds, two bodies. We are kin, both born of the tangled anarchy of the void, but we share not the same creator. She is my ward, and she is my prison. I am her protector, and I am her servant.